Okay. Today is January, February. Today is Wednesday, January 16, 2019. I call to order the I Bisbee Committee meeting. Those present, Denise Lotz is present, Rob Page is present, Kathy Snowden is present, Carrie Gepson is present, and Stephanie Phoebe is present. Where's Carrie? Carrie's not present. Carrie Gepson is en route. <laughs> <laughs> David Smith is present, and our council liaison, and mm -hmm. Lana Williams is present also. I have a motion for the approval of the minutes of our October 17, 2018 meeting. So moved. Is there second. a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to move to our next discussion item, which is a follow-up of our November 13th meeting with the business community which I thought went very well, and I thank uh, Rob and Kathy for really getting the turnout that we had, and we thank the mayor for being there. Rob, talk to us what you think our follow-up should be. Well, um, I'm not, my, my gut feeling, and I've been thinking about this for several weeks, I don't think that this committee is in a position to be the uh, the watchdog for the business community as far as putting together some sort of communication arm. That doesn't mean we can't help. Uh, I think, based on what I see in the city right now, and we, have, we, have, we have pockets of communication within the business community, but there isn't, like we said in the meeting, there isn't any way of discussing with the city. There's no way of really communicating with a source to the city. There's a lot of different voices. Um, I think one of the jobs of this committee is to, to be a liaison, to be a, a catalyst for economic development. Economic development for us, merchants, and I'm speaking just as a merchant, um, is tourism. And a lot of people don't like to talk about that, um, but it is what it is. And without it, I think the conversation in the city would be completely different. So, the fact that, that it is what it is, we need to have a, a viable communication line with the community, with the city. We have to have something in the form of a chamber. Um, this is just my opinion, and it has to be, I don't know what that what the form is, but I have put together, the idea that I have put together is the Slack app. Um, I've been using it in my business now for several months. And it has literally transformed our business, transformed it as a communication tool. Um, in the past, we would spend time texting, and now we have an in-house communication tool that is so valuable, and so cool, that I've got to get everybody involved in it. <clears throat> it's something that we've talked about. A lot of people did get involved in Slack. Um, I know Morgan and I over at Bathtub Coffee. He's excited. He's still excited, still engaged with having something like this as a first start. Um, my suggestion is that as this committee, we we form sort of a smaller ad hoc committee that would address the issue of communication with the city and not necessarily bog down the the agenda for this organization, but rather report to this organization on how we're moving forward. Sort of like we, we, we've, we've occupied a lot of this committee's time with Local First, and that didn't quite pan out the way we wanted it to. That doesn't mean that wasn't a viable uh, option. vehicle or option. I think it still is. Um, there still needs to be something. I would just in, in, encourage everyone to not, not allow this to just fade away. We are in a position right now where... I'm looking at what's happening in the city. We don't have a visitor center, per se, yet. Um, we don't have a chamber. We're not in a position to be taking anything away or destroying anything or not at least exploring options. Because in the absence of those options, I think we have literally nothing. And nothing is not an, op an option for the business community. There has to be something. And I know, what it's, I know it's going to take leadership. It's going to take some open-minded people just saying, you know, let's give it a shot. Let's give a whole bunch of things a shot until something sticks. That's always been my approach to business, and it works. Um, and I think with open minds, we can try as many things as we 
as we need to to make something work. But but again, a lot of us are are bogged down with our own businesses. We're very busy. Um, I don't have a dog in this game. There's nothing I'm going to gain from having a chamber of commerce. I pay a substantial amount of money to my own in-house advertising um, to promote Bisbee. I've spent a lot of money on promoting Bisbee. And I don't necessarily need it. I know how to pick up the phone and call who I need to call to get things done. But, like uh, Christina always said, it's, we're always better together. And I think the community is better together. The business community is better together. And I think we can continue to push this ball forward without spending a lot of time in this committee to do it. Thoughts? Kathy, what are your thoughts? Are you saying that we want a Chamber of Commerce? I'm saying we want something to, from, from the feedback that we got at that meeting, mm -hmm. we want a way to communicate with one another, kind of like the old Bisbee merchants. Mm -hmm. um, we want a way to communicate, but we don't want the meetings. Right. We don't want the, the dues. We don't want the, the bureaucracy and the red tape that goes along with the 501c3. Because, I, I, you know, my experience with chambers here is just... And I feel the same Yeah, way. I, I mean, nobody... Way. And people are getting less meeting-oriented. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I signed up for Slack, but nothing ever... I signed up for it, too. Anything so, of any interest. So, so what, I, I'd like, what I'd like to offer <laughs> is for anybody, anybody willing to take, to take 30 minutes... I will come to your place of business and I will sit with you and I will show you how to use this marvelous application. Because I'll meet you at the kiosk on Saturday. I'll, I'll, you I'll work be on there. Saturday? I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. And that's only because I'm excited. I'm excited about how the application has transformed our business. How, do you, did you find, some, I've only been on it a few times, but are there a lot of other businesses in Bisbee that are actually participating in it? Did right now, know? right now there's so. about 12. And I how many were at that meeting? there's nothing happening, so no. I so don't no understand one is how it's going to help, because there's well, nothing happening. That's I'm the thing. <laughs> so <laughs> let me just give you an example. Um, text messaging, okay? We all text message, right? Um, and it costs money to text message. A lot of people don't because it costs money. Um, Christine is a good example. She won't text message me because it costs money. And I say, okay, Christina, we'll get you on Slack. It's an app. You have an Apple iPhone. You don't even need an Apple. You can have just any iPhone or any phone. Um, you can message me like WhatsApp. You can message as many times as you want. Everybody has access, like Facebook, to that message and to that conversation. Unless you decide, let's say you and I want to have a conversation. We can talk to one another in private on Slack app. Or if we want to say go to Bisbee After Five, right? This conversation on Bisbee After Five is open to everybody that wants to talk about Bisbee After Five. And it's open to everybody that you invite to that conversation. And it becomes almost like a room. If you picture it like rooms, it's literally like that. If, if you want to have a conversation in that room, you go to that room. That room. Or you can have a general conversation that everybody gets to be a part of. So if the city wants to send out an, um, a notice, whatever the notice happens to be, we need a, another member on the iBisbee meeting or the IBISB uh, committee. You can send that, that notice out, and that gets notice to all the business community. The business community is visible on this application. Everyone that's on the application is visible. And, you get, and the city can verify that that's, that's who's there. That's who got the message. Um, like I said, it's, it's new to me in the sense that I've only been using it now since the meeting that we had. That next day, I went over to Morgan's coffee shop, and we sat down. And we, he taught me how to use it. And over the course of a, about two weeks, our business was very hesitant. Nobody wanted to do it. And I, yeah, I had to get three people and then another three people. And, and now I have 57. And those 57 won't stop talking. <laughs> I have to turn this thing off because I'm, because I'm the manager and I get to see all the conversations, except for the private ones. Um, they go into their own respective rooms. They actually contact me and say, will you come into this room and, and arbitrate this conversation that we're having? And I can do that from my bed, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, again, it's, it's just a tool. It's just a method of communication that's not being utilized now. Um, what I envision is a quasi-chamber of commerce. When I say chamber of commerce, just not, it's nothing more than a social yeah, merchant's group. Merchant's group. Let's call it a merchant's group. Because that chamber seems to be a chamber bad sort word. Of, yeah. <laughs> a little PTSD. We have a little PTSD around that. Let's call it a merchant's group. Merchant's group. Let's say that the merchant group, merchant's group 
communicates via an application. Okay? But in that application is Bisbee After 5, Destination Bisbee. And then we have the merchants, or part of the merchants group called um, um, meetings. Uh, not meetings, but uh, what do we do when we all get together? The, uh, Social hour. Social hour. <laughs> <laughs> so last week, a couple weeks ago, we got together over at Bisbee Coffee, and Local First had their, their raffle um, for the, the passport program, right? So we have, and we have new businesses that are opening occasionally. So that would be an arm of our social network of the merchants group. It would not require us to have meetings, per se. It's a very, uh, almost, a, it's a meritocracy. Whatever seems to be gathering uh, steam within the group, all on this app, this social media app, takes place, you can have small committee meetings, you all can get together, you're not bound by Robert's Rules of Order. Um, these things don't confine us, they in fact, they, they allow us to explore so many different areas without the bureaucracy. Does it keep like a, a the whole? You can look back at mm -hmm. the meeting like you can yes. on texting. Yes, unfortunately or fortunately. Okay. <laughs> I do it a lot because it's we. Yeah. Uh, for instance, we have uh, we have in our app um, the unpaid. There's a paid version and an unpaid version. We have up to ten thousand text messages that will be saved. So that's a lot. Yeah. How do you? I. I Sometimes I feel like I'm a dinosaur in these conversations because of the uh, technology. But I, I think you're, you're on to something. And the reason I say that is that people, one, don't want to go to meetings. Uh, number two, there are issues that come up that they some are aware of, some are not aware of. This would be a way to communicate. Stephanie, what we were doing we were looking at how do we give the business community a voice in the city, a voice to work with the city government, a voice to work amongst each other, that we found that the business community has got various small pockets and, and really is not operating as a cohesive business community. Kathy came from San Diego where she was part of a cohesive business community. And one of the things that we're striving to do is, as we look at tourism as our main industry, is to bring about a cohesive business community that can work, that can respond to local government and can raise issues when necessary. Um, and the question was, how do we do it? We had our first meeting in November and we had a meeting with uh, Mayor Smith being the principal guest. I don't know if you were at that meeting or not. No. But the purpose of that meeting was to talk about concerns and ideas of the business community. From there, we then were looking at how do we move next. I thought my great idea was to move in February with a meeting with Jen Lurie to explain the advertising program. Unfortunately, Jen Lurie is no longer with the city, so that went away. So I've been in conversation with Rob, and how do we make this happen? And I know that Rob has been using technology very effectively in his business. And now what you've come to the table is, here's how we can use technology to bring the business community together. I think this is the most viable option from the meeting that we had with the other merchants, who all indicated that they did not want to have organized meetings. Right. PTSD chamber, that, that kind of thing. This is one option that was not even presented by me, it was presented by Morgan and DeAndre, who are mm -hmm. coders. And uh, they're, they're much further down the road of technology than I, I've ever thought I'd be. But, uh, but they, they, they showed me this, we worked on it for a week, and I, don't, I understand it's difficult to get everybody on board, but like I said, I, I've tried it now within my own business. And even the people that were hesitant within my own business to get on it, are now having so much fun that I have to silence them. They're literally having too much fun. They've given themselves their own names. Uh, they, they can put their own picture on there. They can send videos of the work that they've done. For instance, I just had a young man went down in the basement today and cleaned up the Christmas supply room, right? Which looked like a bomb went off. Right? And so I said, go down and clean up the Christmas supply room. So he did. 
he sent me a video text message saying, I just want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Can I put these out here in the hallway? And I, and I video text him back. Yes, you can. And it was funny. And, but everybody got to be a part of that conversation. And when he was done, he video text the entire room, clean, <laughs> spick and span. And he was very proud of himself. And then everybody got on and said, yay, fantastic job. And I went, it works. <laughs> because otherwise, no. I would have never heard that kid. Is, is there going to be an effort to do it under an IBISB thing or under what the yeah. business meeting so, came to? So I'll just uh, pull what it up. Would that be? What's the name quickly. of that group? I'll pull it quickly. Um, Slack? No, Slack. the Bisbee one. Bisbee Local. Bisbee Local? Right. So what I did was you can download the app. Yeah. So I've downloaded Bisbee Local and I'm looking at it right now. And for instance, at the moment, we only have three channels. Okay, a channel is like a room. Right now I have hashtag Bisbee Foodie, and I started that out, and I said, uh, occasionally we have too many applicants and not enough jobs. I spoke with a fellow restaurateur who had too few applicants and needed some help. So I, and what actually happened was now she has one applicant for one of her jobs, just from asking through Slack. And I can do this on the fly. If I have four applicants for no jobs, and I ask those applicants as they come in, is anyone interested in working at Anna's, for instance? That's, that's the conversation we had. And uh, they said, well, sure. I just want a job. So I send them up to Anna's. Now Anna has an employee. That's what I think a chamber of commerce should be, should have been doing, yes. right? That's, chamber is a business networking group. And it can work in a lot of different ways. I'm sure there's ways that could all help us stumble along a little bit better, but <clears throat> for instance, there's, we have Bisbee Foodie, General, and Random. Random's not used very often, but you can see the people that are on it currently. Uh, Bisbee Soap and Sundry, Bisbee Leno, Deandra, uh, Kelly Galligan, Morgan Oxley, Pantera, Stan Stern. Um, but I, like I said, I'm happy. There's a lot more on there. Are there's you actually, random? There's actually I, I, I posted something on the thing, and I heard nothing after that. I mean, yeah. Stanley. <laughs> I mean, I, I did my thing as a follow-up to our like, 13th meeting, and I, you know. <laughs> but I, like I said, I'm happy to, just like Morgan did with me, we, we just sit down. It takes about 30 minutes, and then after the 30 minutes, it takes you another 30 or 45 minutes to sort of get familiar with it. Um, but it's such an easy app. And then once you get into it, you realize how, how vital it is to that communication line. Then it becomes, literally, it becomes fun. Um, the things that you can do with it. Um, Facebook, an, another really good example, but Facebook is, gets so clouded with so much other minutia mm -hmm. that it, it, you know, for it really, I mean, you know, the, the wormhole called Facebook. If you're, if you're in business and you're trying to get something done and you have to go to Facebook to find what you're looking for, it could take you forever and then you get lost. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is an app that allows you that same method of communication, i.e. like Messenger, without all that, that BS. Um, and you can create as many channels as you want. I, I really envision this as one of the, the number one methods of communication in the next 10 years. Um, so question, question, may I Sure, of course, course, David. We're very <laughs> informal. Go ahead. Um, you had mentioned a couple things earlier in his intro that I wanted to address in a minute, but mm -hmm. my question is then, so uh, in using Slack, the city could, uh, could uh, set up a, a channel. Mm -hmm. And to communicate with the business community direct, yes, direct. city of Bisbee channel, whatever city the hell you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if the business community wanted to know what was going on, they could go into they could that. Go to that channel. Oh, great idea. I like I said, I have no idea what the legal part of that. Well, is we when it comes yeah. to a city and the community. We, we know a little bit, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's it's and, and if we had to make it more formal, you could you could take whatever the city has to say and put it on. So you put it on the website, and then that could be taken and put into Slack. I, you know, there's, I don't, okay. like, it, it's all new, and we're entrepreneurs. Our job is to explore new territories right. and see what we can get out of them. So hypothetically, remember when they fixed the flagpole on the library and the street was closed for mm -hmm. like a couple of hours, right. and people were getting deliveries, and mm -hmm. So hypothetically, when that got scheduled, Dwayne could have gotten on Slack and, and said, said this is what's going on. Okay. Just that quick. By the way, guys, if you look out the window, it's an it's absolute a beautiful picture postcard. Oh, so That's beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> that Isn't that so gorgeous? Sad. Thank you. David, do you have more comments? 
Well, I had a couple uh, things. Uh, the first thing was you mentioned the visitor center. So I'd like to, if I might, catch you up on that real quick. Please, that would be great. Okay. Um, situation with the visitor center is that uh, uh, myself, the city manager, uh, those that we're aware of at this particular point uh, are certainly uh, wanting to proceed and to fill Jen's job. Mm -hmm. um, uh, somehow, somebody has started a rumor that we were not going to fill that and that we were going to allocate money into something else. Uh, there's absolutely no basis for that. That's never even been dreamed of, let alone discussed. Um, we, uh, Fred has put together, you know, put through a suggestion that we hire two part-time people. Uh, one one uh, with strengths in um, the visitor center portion mm -hmm. and um, meeting people and, and uh, doing with the writers and all that sort of stuff. The other one more into the um, technical, the IT type, type stuff. Uh, we're looking at that. That's not top on our list quite honestly, but mm -hmm. it is being looked at because it was brought up. Um, I have asked uh, for uh, this to be postponed for a month uh, because I want the council to meet for the strategic uh, planning because I feel it's very important for us to decide where we're going before we get somebody that's going to help get us there. The, um, that's helpful. So that's why the job is not posted. Okay. Kathy. Um, I guess I just wanted to comment on that two people. This is a professional job. This person's going to want benefits. You know, you don't want two 20 hour a week people. And Plus, I they have. David, David's indicated yeah. that he's back home. Plus, they have travel writers they have to meet with. Sometimes it's seven in the evening, and if you're only working 20 hours a week, it's really hard to balance yeah, that. Yeah, I think David's indicated that's off the table. I didn't hear that. Yeah. The idea of He the said split, he was looking at it. Split, yeah, yeah, it's pretty well off the table. That's pretty um, And then the second thing I wanted to mention is the meeting that you guys had that I was able to attend, and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you. Um, you generated an email list. You didn't get that? And I, I did, did we get that? I yeah, I asked yeah, yeah. you if you did it. No. I was on his case. Okay. She was. <laughs> well, so you because you we've list. actually had, as a result of that meeting, we talked about an email list that we can uh, blast things out, such as what Kathy was mentioning, the, the, the shutting down of the streets. Particularly, APS is going to be shutting down Tombstone Canyon um, they are replacing every pole in Tombstone Canyon. And I requested that they wait till after our tourist season. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, there will be, as, as there, there will be some, some issues. And so we need a vehicle to blast that out. And the, your email list, while we discuss Slack and so forth, is something that we can, that we can take and we can blast that out and say, and, um, um, we're also putting it on our website. APS has given me a, 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 a itinerary, mm -hmm. uh, and they're going to do everything they can to hold off as long as they can. But some of these poles are dangerous. They're coming down. They had to replace one uh, on uh, Maxfield last weekend. Mm -hmm. So um, they uh, right by your store. Mm -hmm. uh, if you take those stairs directly up, that's where the pole was, where the car came over. Having nothing to do with the poll, but that's a different issue. Yeah. Okay, so um, if we can get that uh, list. So, Mr. Chairman, the, the one, the, one of the challenges we'll face is the foundation of how this slack list is maintained. Okay, um, Obviously, you don't want it to be maintained by, by one person. So, I don't, want to, I don't want to go into the chamber route, but um, perhaps the city... It, there's got to be a, there's got to be something that can maintain this slack. For instance, I mean, if I say if I had it uh, like right now, I have Bisbee Local connected to myself. If I left town, then that method of communication would be. Would Can't you have a number of people like on Facebook? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, so you're talking sort of like the out. site administrators. Yes. So you'd have to have site administrators, and it would have to be founded in something that's not just going to evaporate. 
So in other words, the technology, like sending you an email list, <laughs> it sounds simple, <laughs> except I'm not that technologically advanced. I do know people who are. So I can get those people into my office and they can help me walk the next step. Morgan has, has been really great. So I can sit down with him and ask him, in, in larger institutions, and there are large companies that have Slack and use it, how do they maintain the infrastructure so that it, one person can't sabotage it or not sabotage it, but maybe just hijack it, it. We call hijack it. it. You know, we don't want to have an IT it. department in the city. Don't, do <laughs> don't go there. Do you have an IT representative? <laughs> no. We have uh, a um, we have IT people that maintain our IT services. We don't have uh, somebody that uh, takes care of the software side of it. That, that you're talking about. Exactly. You see, we've never, we really have never had that. I'm, I'm looking, I, I hear what Rob's saying, well, let's first discuss Slack and then come back to the question, how do we get it up and maintain it? Carrie, what do you think? I have to, I have to learn more about this, but IBISB has kind of lost its way. Maybe IBISB could be the site administrators and come back into some purpose. Okay. I like that idea. I like that idea too. Like that idea. Especially if we go to quarterly, we can all work on this. Mm -hmm. And the city is still trying to get C Click Fix to work. Yeah. So I don't so, know that they're going to want one more app to deal with. Um, it's the Robert's Rules of Order and how we are able to communicate. Um, Without the, without the, the Arizona <laughs> open <laughs> meeting yeah. statute. Uh, it's the open meeting that always seems to take the, it takes the creativity right out of what we want to do. Um, <laughs> we can do this. I've got several questions on Slack. But let me see. Denise, do you have some questions? Um, I just am trying to figure out how people are going to actually get on it and use it. Like you, me, you, I'm the perfect example. I signed on. I... Mm -hmm. You know, got in there thinking this will be cool and everybody's going to come on board, um, and then that was it. <laughs> so, so I, you know, it would be things. wonderful if we could get all the businesses involved. Um, and I love the fact that the city could like blast things out. I I think that's wonderful. And if and the companies or the businesses would blast things out like what's going on at their store, or, you know, j just arrived today, or you know. I just feel like I still don't know where to go to to find information what's going on in our city. Mm -hmm. And if we could utilize this tool, that would be nice. Did you see me in there? Mm -hmm. I just sent you a hello. <laughs> 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 the, uh, my, my question is, how do we get the business community involved in using this? Yes. Uh, it's, that's going to that's going to be the legwork. If it's I like can, the arts and culture district. If, if I can, one if person I can has get, to do all the work. If I could just get everybody's like initial, attaboy, go out there, do your best. We're behind you, <laughs> and 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 support that up until the point you think there is something that needs to be discussed. Just give me the go ahead to go out there and start beating on doors, and I will I will walk into each business and show you everybody how to do it. And then once they understand how to do it, we'll, we'll have a, um, a mixer. We need to have a mixer because we have no longer had local first. I'd like to have a mixer just to say welcome to, is there any other news? Slack. New welcome to Slack. Slack. Welcome, welcome to Slack. Slack. <laughs> and we'll have a big screen television. Uh, mm -hmm. Morgan can help us get it set up. And we can all sit around and drink wine and work on Slack. Be, 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 <laughs> be slackers. Be slackers. I think it would be an interesting project for iBisby to take under. Okay. Um, and the reason I'm doing that, I picked up on Carrie's point, and I think she's right. Um, iBisby is, and we're going to be talking about this in the next segment, um, we have to look at our, our mission and, and figure out how we're going to work. And one of the things that we decided in our discussions was we had to get our business community together and working together. That, that, that became an issue. Um, this, to me, is something that should be tried. Um, if we fail, we fail. But it sounds like to me you've got a system here that if it was working correctly, 
it would give the merchants and people, and, and I've got to include the businesses in, in San Jose too, because that's, that's important. And if we do it as an I Bisbee thing, we have to include all our businesses. They may not opt to be involved, they may opt to be involved. Um, which makes it more difficult for you as, as you're going out proselytizing for Slack. Mm -hmm. But I, I, as I look forward to this, I think it gives us a chance to use technology to our benefit in this city. And, and we, don't, we don't have that today. Um, we don't have a way for, let me use you as an example, Kathy. Kathy, if Kathy gets new merchandise in, she has no way to really go out to our community and say, Finder Keeper has just received X. Well, Facebook. Uh, yeah, but, fa you, yeah, you, you use Facebook now for something like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. because it, it, you don't want to let necessarily, I don't, Rob doesn't care that I got it in, but I do. All these sweet little ladies <laughs> who like those particular brooches right. would really like to know. So, and there's lots of, but it sounds like Slack's kind of like Facebook. Except for you don't have to it's, sift through all yeah. the other people's right. stuff, right. which right. would really But in it. order to go to say what's happening at Finders Keepers, you would have to go to, um, say we created a, a channel called um, Bisbee Antiques, yeah. or Bisbee Retail, right? And then you'd have Bisbee Food, and then you'd have Bisbee, you know, channels that are relevant to Logic. whatever you're selling, yeah. Bisbee Lodging, yeah. right? And so if you, if say you popped into Bisbee Lodging, it could be some advertising. In that there. would be really but, good for them. But what? Say, for instance, you had a question like, "What is?" I get this question all the time. What is the Bisbee Hotel tax? Right. Oh. So somebody chimes in and says, "Let's say they say it's four point two, right?" And then you have somebody else say, "No, no, 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 it's thirteen point five. No, 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 it's." And you go, but it opens the discussion, right? And then you have someone from the city come in and say, "This is what it is." <laughs> <laughs> but it, again, it's it's communication. Facebook can get. Can get lost in there. Um, and then what we would be doing is setting up a communication system for the merchants of the community. Yes. I mean, that's that's really what we're doing. We're setting up a business communication system it's only to operate as, within Bisbee, Arizona. But it's only as good as the people that participate. Right. 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 And setting up the right channels. Setting up the right like channels. Like the lodgings during tourist season, and if El Dorado could post, I just had a cancellation, right. I've got this mm -hmm. room available. Exactly. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Again, it's you know. like it's like the chamber. Yeah. Well, and that's how chamber. we sell it too. Yeah. That's when sort of we like the when we work with the business lodging. community, that's a perfect example, Kathy. I mean, and the lodging people should love this type of thing. But she's not there twenty four hours a day. A no. lot of times, you know, it happens. I, I just want to I want to go back to this this sort of system administrators, mm -hmm. and IBSB as a city committee, and IBSB as individual members. What is entailed in managing this system? Is it simply, I don't, I don't understand what's entailed on managing it. Well, um, the way I manage the 57 kids that are on our channel at the moment, um, I, I, you do have the option of turning it on and off as far as the bells and whistles. And yeah. I will spend, um, I'll spend maybe an hour a day um, administering or answering questions and then um, watching what goes on. Everybody's, you can have four or five, I do have four or five managers that are site administrators, and everybody sort of polices each other. So they're policing what's happening, I'm policing what's happening. I don't understand how policing works on this. Um, well, I shouldn't say policing's a, policing's not so the right word. <laughs> what do you call um, PTSD? Well, <laughs> for instance, this one, this one kid got on there the other day and posted pictures of him in his pajamas. And they started this back and forth about uh, how he was in his pajamas and had a great night last night and I'm a little hungover this morning and one of the managers got on and said go to Facebook <laughs> <laughs> and you can silence him mm -hmm. the administrator can silence him if he decides he doesn't want to do that but it's a it's, you know we're in a business like a watchdog like a watchdog it's so a business because I'm wondering so. why we as you know a committee can't do that since we're not Dealing with a quorum, you know, mm -hmm. issue. We're not dealing with be able taking to. action. Should be able to. Uh, we're just, you know, there to keep something open. Yeah, everything takes. I think everything takes some regulation, some yeah. some guidelines, right? And some people always have a chance, have an opportunity to get in there, and, and you know, I, we don't know because we haven't been there yet. But I'm sure, something could happen that would hijack the channel. 
Um, but it can't really. You can you can delete people. You can take. You have to invite. You have to be invited I into really the group, like right? So if you're uninvited, like this kid's going to be uninvited if he tells us what he did last night again. <laughs> <laughs> you can invite somebody, and then you can reinvite them after they decide. Maybe yeah. there's a maybe there's a, a form, uh, uh, an online agreement. You know that you're going to be. Like site administrators in Facebook, you know. Um, if you have a site administrator on Facebook and somebody gets in there and decides they're going to advertise um, what's happening in Nebraska, you know, you can say, I'm sorry, that's, this is not the right channel for that. And you can take them out. Um, I like these terms, delete them, take <laughs> them out. Delete them, you can delete them. Um, again, it, the focus of the okay, site yeah. is for communication. Yeah. And communication is is for that particular group and that that's the conversation that should be taken. So it sounds place. like we need a couple of research things going on. First of all, I would, I just started it today, but I haven't gotten anywhere because I had all this other stuff I had to get done before I left. But all of us have to sort of get on there and figure out what we're doing mm -hmm. with either you or Morgan's help. Mm -hmm. Another one is finding out about this, the site administration mm -hmm. and what that entails and if we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I don't see why we cannot, but I think I think it would be pretty good because we can just go into different areas of our expertise. Um, I can guarantee you, there's only going to be one person on museums. <laughs> but uh, but we can all look at that and, and and work on that. So it sounds like there's some homework here. It sounds it sounds like um, we have a lot of work, and you you you've opted to go out and consult with the business community. I think it would be good for us to meet with Morgan, um, because when he gets to me, he's going to find out a half an hour is not enough time to teach him <laughs> how to do it. <laughs> but the long and the short of it is, I, I, think, I think you're on to something. And the reason I think you're on to something is for things that Kathy has said too. What people are interested in is a way to know that El Dorado just had a cancellation. Well, or we have a new entree at the table and things like that. Mm -hmm. Or the city is interested in telling people that the APS is going to be putting up new poles on Tombstone and this is the schedule for that event. Right. I think we have a neat system to communicate using technology today to communicate with our business community. I congratulate you in coming up with this idea. I, I really do. Because it, it will work. And, and the more people learn about it, the more they'll want to be on it in terms of the businesses. And it gives us a chance to really build without setting up a chamber and going through a bunch of nonsense or kidding people up for dues. It gives us a chance to build a communication system within our business community, which is absolutely important. Um, I have been appalled as I look at the business community, that the business community doesn't support each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, and I think of the events that people have and we're, we're, we're not all involved helping that event come along. Um, I think of your great Gay Pride event as an example, which is a community-wide event. But uh, we, we need to have everybody aware and, and working with us on things like that. So, um, Stephanie, what do you think? Well, you have to understand my, my, <laughs> my, my style is to call on people. Well, so. okay. I'm, I'm happy to just give my two cents worth okay. without being the newest member. Okay. Um, I would love to see the demographics on who is using the apps because having worked for Rob for many years, we were the visitor center. How many people came up and said, where can I go for a hike? Oh, we, we, we serve that function too. As a, Me too. And, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, you do, don't you? We're, it's just an informal thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more the older, middle-aged people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. And so this is a demographic that I think hits one piece. But then you got to the visitor center. You guys are the visitor center. Um, to hit the um, older group who actually has more disposable income. Mm -hmm. That's just my thought on it. Okay. But I can't tell you how many times I've 
giving people maps for hikes and whatnot. Sure. So yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. sure. Well, that's one of the reasons we brought the little office downtown is there was such a disconnect with the highway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think it's working. You have to have both. And one, the social channel, one channel on this could be visitor center. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the communications be great. that the visitor center wanted to make, or all the communications mm -hmm. you wanted to make with the visitor could center. Could it really? Yeah. Oh, that's you could. Good. You could literally get on there and go right to the visitor center and say, let's say that Jen was still there. Say, hey Jen, um, what are your hours? But so you've got mm -hmm. Brenda and Ramon. Say, say you went to visitor center yeah. and Brenda and Ramon. Say, what are the hours? Well, how are you open? They could respond immediately because they've got their laptop sitting there, and you can have an answer like that. For a customer that's sitting at your kiosk, not buying which is all day long. Yeah, I know. It's like, and the demographic is retirees that I get right. all day long. Right. Who want like, information, but they mm -hmm. are are very savvy on on social media and stuff. But yeah, well, I don't know about that, well, but <laughs> or if you taught them. Okay. <laughs> well, let, let me let me draw this to a conclusion. It's not an action item, but it, but this committee doesn't need to take formal action. Rob, you volunteered to go out. And stir the pot. Yes. And see if we can make this work. Is anybody not in favor of having Rob move out and see what we what we can get? What, what our activity is. Number two, we need to meet with Morgan as a committee because we need to understand what the administrative job is, and and is this something? I'd like to do this under the auspices of I. Bisbee. Okay. And the reason I'd like to do it under the auspices of I. Bisbee, I think we can play a role that's not the Chamber of Commerce, but can work with our business community. Mm -hmm. And this is the type of thing, if we could get this organized, you start really pulling together the business community using technology. So does anybody have any objection to having Rob become our prosthetizer for a while and see if we can get this moving? No objections. Heck no. <laughs> no objections. Thank you. You've just been anointed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. If we meet with Morgan, would it be possible for everybody to download the app on their phone and maybe see her? I, I would suggest we all bring our phones. Yeah. You know, yeah, because it's easier to see it and figure it out <laughs> than it is to... Hypothetical. Yeah, we we'll have, have to have a special meeting. You'll have to have a special meeting. <laughs> we will. We, we understand the open meeting laws. So we'll, 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 we'll have a special meeting and have Morgan come and really discuss this with us. Are you, do you know that, can you as a person, like if I only wanted to hear information about finders keepers, and what's going on at the table. Can I block out all the others yes. and just get notifications yes. from them? Yes. You so can I can silence. pick and choose? You can silence okay. every channel that you don't want to hear from, okay. but that channel will still be bolded okay. if okay. there's information happening in it. Okay, so I can look at it if right. I choose to. Right, and then you can okay. choose. Very right. good. You have to send me a Slack message. I, you read my name as one of the people in I Slack. I did read. You and I were at the sure. same time. I think we talked to each other for half a second. I will, I will begin this by being this little bug in your, in your, on your phone. It won't let you go, and then you'll have to find your way through there to respond to me. Because, well, I, I really don't text, but I, I guess I'll have to. Um, okay, that, that's a way to start. Kathy, you think? what do you think? I think it's great. I'm trying to think of how we could use it for the animal shelter. Oh, yeah. Sure, of course. <gasps> Even Cute better. puppies. You can see one, one of your rooms. Out. One yeah. of your channels. Mm -hmm. You can have your own yeah. Slack. Pet channel. And then everybody within the... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we text constantly, so... Okay. So, good. We're, we're ready you. to move. Thank you. I want to move to the next item. For some reason, something is missing from my itinerary, which was a discussion of I. Bisbee. It is. It's the next item after number three. It's after page. number three. Yeah. yeah, it's on number four. Okay, I'm going to um, shift the itinerary okay. to make that the last item. What I'd like to do is discuss with us our committee, I busy and where we're going to go. We've been at this, Stephanie, for four and a half years. Um, we have had successes. We have had failures. We've had false starts. Um, 
our big successes ironically came early on in our our history we when we did branding and what we did we worked Carrie and and uh, Kathy. And Kathy worked together on branding. And Peter. And Peter. Peter, right. yeah, Peter was there. And we really put a change to the branding of the city from what I called circa 1987 branding to at that point 2015 branding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that I think was a good move. We also brought in the Urban Land Institute. Uh, some of you have looked recently at your email, you see that I've sent you the Urban Land Institute report. That was generated in 2015 or 2014? 2015, generated in 2015. And um, we had the Urban Land Institute come to Bisbee. It was paid for by the Union Pacific Railroad Foundation and do a day-long session with us concerning how do, what are we going to do with Bisbee to bring in economic development, to create business opportunities, to how do we utilize our city. And we started by taking them on a tour of the city. They, we had a panel of excellent people on your report. You'll see the biographical sketches of the people. They were top-notch people in real estate and land development. The Urban Land Institute is an international organization composed of leading real estate people and developers in the world. Um, we met them through some contacts that I had, David and I had lunch with some people, and then we went to the, a meeting that they had in Tucson and made contact and then developed the contact where Bisbee, albeit not on the Union Pacific Railroad at all, but was able to get the Urban Land Institute to come down and spend the day with us and pay for it by the urban by the Union Pacific Railroad. And that was a well attended meeting and we must have had 60, 70 people come to it. Uh, it went on for from breakfast through lunch and uh, we had a dinner before. It led us to uh, begin to look at uh, low income home housing for senior citizens. It opened doors for that. Uh, we subsequently went back to them and suggested that we'd like to continue working with the Urban Land Institute. And they were somewhat in favor of that, but they felt that they had done their real work when they issued their report. So on your computers, you'll find the report that was uh, put together by the Urban Land Institute. David, if you have a retreat with your um, council members, we think that maybe the Urban Land Institute report would be of interest to them. Looking forward to... <clears throat> I can uh, certainly try. And Nina, mm -hmm. I brought a copy of the report so you can make copies of it for the council. It's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. The ULI. It's on the website? Mm -hmm. It's under our plans and studies. I think what I really liked about the report is that it wasn't a canned soup thing. Mm -hmm. they, they came down and, and looked at us, and, and it was a report about Bisbee. It wasn't a report about Chandler, trying to overlay Chandler onto Bisbee. And, and that impressed me a lot with it. I think the weakest part of that was the tourism. But we had already started a bunch of initiatives that I guess they hadn't heard about. But it was really nice that it was really looking at Bisbee and not trying to bring in someone else's structure or concepts. It also gets a lot of stuff out of the way and off mm -hmm. the table, like like for your suggestion with the council, it kind of gives a really professional purview of what is possible here and what's probably not worth looking at. You know, like large manufacturing is probably or, not or a good 60, idea. Or 60 acres of land yeah. by the airport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... I mean, they, it, it's a, uh, I commend it to you, Stephanie. I think you'll find it interesting and to you too, Denise. Have you read it, Rob? No, yeah, no. Uh, you, I think you'll find it to be very interesting in a way to proceed. Do you like to read off the computer or do you like to read regular? Uh, off the computer is easiest. Yeah. 
I mean, I definitely feel it. Does anybody like, like to read regular? Because oh, I have I a do. copy of the report. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. yeah. I got it. I, it's good. I saw it just as I was Because if you wanted the hard copy, I can look at mine. I've got a hard copy right okay. here for okay. you. I printed one out. Thank you. I've heard a lot about it. I just think that's... A little embarrassed. I was going to suggest what we talked about what we're going to do in the upcoming year that oh, we revisit here, this. Take, take I think Thank there's you. stuff in there that that's still doable. Why don't we stay on that? For a my name on it. Um, Kathy suggests that for our next meeting that we take it upon it ourselves to have an assignment of reviewing that report and uh, then discussing it. It will have more meaning to us now, frankly, mm -hmm. uh, that we've been working with it and now use it as a tool to work with them. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to contact the Urban Land Institute to see if they uh, would like to work with us additionally. I mean, it is really the top of the business, the uh, real estate development profession. And there is a statewide chapter of it. Um, as we look at our committee for the coming year, let's let's talk about this because I have come to the conclusion that we're a one industry town at the present time. Sometime when probably we're all gone, we'll be a two industry town uh, when the copper mine is reopened. But um, that's in the distant future. So we look at ourselves as a one industry town and that industry is tourism. Um, I think to try to make it anything else is, I mean, luck would have to come to us. We've had people come to town. We've met with people, um, people who had deep pockets. I, I didn't want to deal with the flim flam. I mean, we deal with real, real stuff. Uh, we had people look at putting a hotel in Bisbee. Um, did an actual survey. People who had a, chains of hotels. And their feeling was that Bisbee could only support 45 rooms in a new hotel. Um, their smallest hotel was 75 rooms. So that took them out of the picture. Um, we've had people come and look at people who are developers of home sites um, and did not see a market that would be profitable to them in the short run that they had in their time schedules. Um, so we, we come back to the point that tourism is really the industry of this town at the present time. And all of us around the table are involved in tourism in one way or another. So then the question comes, how do we as a committee work to enhance tourism? Or what do we do knowing that that is our industry in town? And knowing that we're the economic development thing, how do we develop further, further our tourism business? Now, certainly the work done and our, our, our luck in many cases. I think Farmer's Guide was, thank, thank God Jennifer just happened to talk to the right guy. I mean, I, I mean when I, I look at how we are getting there, how do we, how do we promote and build more tourism in our town? And all of you are involved in it. What are your suggestions? I miss Jen. What? I miss Jen. <laughs> we, we miss Jen. Yeah, I'm going to approach Jen to she see if she'd friend. like to be on our committee. She did a phenomenal I think she, she would did. be. I think she would be very good on our committee. She would be. I mean, it's hard to. She's a pro. And, she's um, good at it. Well, but Jen. The facts of the matter are Jen is no longer doing that. But so. Jen also learned on the job. She did. But she also, She's brilliant, but she learned on the job. But she, she also was a graphic learned. artist and came with Come skill sets job. that yeah. were really valuable to the city. You know, she would draw up and do up an ad, and you know we would have had to pay Bridget to do. Well, she was because she needed. She was it. part of the branding yeah. campaign. <laughs> she helped develop it. You you mm -hmm. worked with her on yeah. branding. Um, so the question that I've got is. How as a committee, how do we best function to really support our community and make it work? Uh, Rob, you brought an interesting suggestion to the table in the first part of this meeting, which we, we've adopted. 
but how do we work together and where do where can we be helpful in building up our tourism? Is is there a is there a part of the community that feels that tourism is not necessary and would like to see tourism go away? That's for me, that that sort of is the fly in the ointment because if there is a part of the community that is trying to stop tourism, then we have to have some set of negotiating skills to deal with those people so that we can help bring them on board. Otherwise, we have, when we come with an idea, we're met with... We're met, we're, 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 we're we're met with... Or Ward 3, and they're saying, wait, we don't need that, right? If people understand that tourism is the driving force, then there needs to be conversations that show us the benefits of it. I think, I think that one, the underlying fact, will be education. Mm -hmm. And I guess when you get old enough, you realize that you can try so hard to give information to people if they don't want to hear it, they won't. Mm -hmm. But then I would just put those people aside and keep going. And I think there's not a lot of education out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think tourism is kind of anecdotal mm -hmm. in terms of the general Bisbee population. Mm -hmm. And I know Jen was starting to collect data. Um, and I think maybe we need to look at Campaign is the wrong word, but getting more information out that's just solid uh, information. Because I hear a bunch of times, well, you know, San Jose contributes the most money because of Safeway. Well, who shops at Safeway? The whole town. It, and, you know, so it's not just, you know, there, there's, there's a couple of issues in there that we can work on for education and things like that. And I think there's generally, at least up in the historic district, fairly positive. But I do think that the, as a community, we need to get the other districts on board to support the efforts and also to support the efforts that are happening in the other communities in terms of tourism. Yeah, I think one of the, and I'm not trying to be negative, so okay, I, think, sure. but I think one of the problems is the city doesn't really seem to value tourism that much. I mean, if you go to a council meeting or whatever, it's, it's not even, it, they never have. I'm not saying it's this administration. I've been here 14 years, and Godwin Ertley was mayor. He would almost, he would have loved to have <laughs> shoved it in a hole and covered it up. <laughs> but, um, but I think the city needs to, it, somehow it needs to be brought across. Maybe, that education. maybe one of the things, and I'm picking up on Carrie's education, maybe one of the venues that has to be educated is the city council. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe the facts that we have an economic development committee, maybe we have to go in front of the city council and explain that our major industry in this town is tourism. I think you can do something like Jen put together a presentation that had a whole bunch of, this is what I'm doing and this is how we're getting the word out there. But what was missing from that, I think, in terms of trying to educate a broader group is why. Mm -hmm. And why we're doing this this is what we're doing, and this is how effective it is. And I think a lot of the effectiveness is sustaining us. We're, we're losing population, but we're sustaining ourselves. Um, and I think if we could you know, use kind of that as a core piece, because that's, there's so much information in there, but put in the pieces that are totally missing, because she was talking to an audience that understood it, or she thought that understood it, and put in the whys and the outcomes. Uh, in just general terms, and why it's important to this city, rather than just having a whole bunch of data and a PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we get that out to the population, Stephanie? I um, was working for Bisbee Vogue for many years, and I did trend analysis. And what I discovered, that I believe, of target marketing, that uh, the growth was in um, San Diego. Uh, El Paso and the quarter of Colorado and those people were bringing an average of 2.8 people with them and they were coming not only for the Bisbee 1000 but they were coming back and telling more people about them so the, the um, yeah, there was a lot and, and so to me it would be there's your target market right there that because these people are already coming and telling more people about them. So I think that gives you a lot of bang for your buck if you're going to do something. I think what I was talking about is targeting our community to educate them. Just oh, within, within yeah. our community. 
I mean, I, li I, live, I live in San Jose. Uh, many people in San Jose don't even go downtown um, and don't really have a, a, a real understanding of how the community works. I mean, I was at a brunch not long ago and people were suggesting we have to spin off San Jose, who, who needs the, who needs the <laughs> other party? You know, I'm sitting there going, oh my God, it's rebellion. <laughs> um, but no, but, but, but looking at how do we, it seems to me there are several targets. Our community is one, and, and our community knowing that tourism, that we are a tourism community, that is our industry. And we have a lot to bring people to come here to do. But we have a lot of people that need to learn about that. That's right. And well, I'm, I'm thinking what you're talking about in terms mm -hmm. of targeting San Diego and all this, that's really the job of whoever the tourism, the tourism person director. director is. But I think our job for IBISB is laying the foundations to have positive outcomes in terms of decisions being made mm -hmm. regarding tourism. Yeah. And to me, that backtracks to the community. Sure. And it's kind of, you know, like Slack, we need to teach ourselves this. I think we need to teach ourselves as a whole community, not just old Bisbee, but as a whole community, yeah. mm -hmm. the importance of tourism and the role it plays, and also to, to listen to people that have complaints about tourism to see if there's something we can mitigate. If, if there's something in there that is a serious issue that could be mitigated. I remember with the trails in Zacatecas Canyon. Mm -hmm. right, well, exactly. the mitigation of that was, let's not put a trail up to Apotecas Canyon. Mm -hmm. Let's listen to these guys and not do that. I mean, we never even talked about doing that anyway, but, but that would be kind of an example. And I think as a, you know, volunteer city committee, well, there's a million things that we could do, and we tried to buy it off a lot and haven't gone far, but I kind of agree with Fred that it would be great if we can have more diversity in our, in our different economic uh, kind of inputs to the city, but tourism is something I think we need to protect and strengthen and make more widespread. Well, you mentioned something in your email. What talents do we all bring to the table? We're a small town. What talents do we bring to the table that are not tourism based? Really? I'm, yeah, and my real estate business I can is miss. really busy mm -hmm. with um, tourists. They start as tourists, mm -hmm. they come back every yep. year. They like it. They keep coming back. Keep keep coming back. I'm retiring next year. I want to buy. Yep. And that's why tourism is important and too. And most right. of my right. clients that are coming into Bisbee are retirement age, and they've been coming here vacationing, and they love it. So they want to come back and live. Well, the guys at Bisbee Books and Music. Yes. Those guys oh, they're from Chicago. Visited here a couple of times. Yeah, loved they're great. It. They bought yeah. a business. They bought but a see, home. This is, this is Ken and Craig. And people need to I see we, this. Yeah. This you is know. the kind of information I think we should get out to our community, mm -hmm. to people that are not fully understanding the impact of tourism. It's not just tourism. No. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. It's right. not just it buying something really on a store, It's almost a Chamber of Commerce type thing. Or the Gulch. It's much more. I hate to say that's more emerging. Well, but that's what chambers used to do. They used to reach out to people to move into their community, and right. we do it more by our events, like Pride Weekend. We would always, almost always end up with five couples I moving think, to Bisbee mm -hmm. after Pride. I think that's why you know. Kimber had such a hard time pigeonholing any one part mm -hmm. of Bisbee, because there, there are some aspects of what we do that are so organic to our mm -hmm. daily lives that attracting people to our community is just... It just happens. It just it just is. But mm -hmm. I think but but I think like your your discussion on lodging, beginning as tourists and then yeah. falling in love with the community and coming right. to settle. Um, that's the kind of information I think we should get out. And that's that organic growth. And that's not putting into everything into neat little boxes saying, you know, pick a number. Or here's your box. But it there. is a result of yeah. full stores. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. hundred you know, almost hundred percent occupancy on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A livable community. Right? Those are the things mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. was driving somebody from Chicago to come here in this little old town. But, the, but also, <laughs> what I see up in, up in the historic district where I live too is there's a lot of investment in the homes. Yes. So again, it's a multiplier right, right. Uh, that's beyond just somebody's vision that tourists just come and we'll have lunch at Cafe Cornucopia and buy, uh, I don't know, some soaps from Soap and Sundry or something like right, that. Right. 
It's more than that, and I think our community needs to start mm -hmm. learning that. So maybe we just need to be able to articulate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the job of mm -hmm. I. Bisbee is to help articulate the economic engine. I think, I think, I think yeah. that's right. And I, I think we have to articulate it in various forms. Um, and maybe the way we do it, I'm looking for vehicles. One, one vehicle could be that we put out in the, in the local paper, a um, article every once in a while about Bisbee and about our industry and the attraction of people to our community to live, things of that order. Um, we don't have a whole lot of ways to get the word out, um, but I think we have to do it. I, I think we have to have people beginning to understand that our community, it's a benefit of our, to our community for people to come to our community and buy homes and move into our community. It's a real positive. Um, and it gets things done. But I think there's a why to that too that is a sellable mm -hmm. concept, which is we're losing population. And the more people we lose, the higher our percentage mm -hmm. individually we pay out. Mm -hmm. So right. if we can go back to rebuild that population. Yeah. That's the whys that go in there That's that I'm right. talking about. The, you know, a lot of people say there was, I've heard a bunch of it and it's, I find it really amusing about outsiders by people who've been here eight years. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but someone who's been here a year is an outsider. And, and I just find this really humorous. But I think what we need to do is, is jump beyond or, or educate that perception to the fact that outsiders become insiders. Mm -hmm. And if we all work together, then we, you know, we are going to have to be paying less for different services. Hey, or we can your best friend. Yeah, your best friend. do different your services. Best friend. <laughs> Sorry, I just shut her up. I just took her out. <laughs> um, but I, I really do think this is a really good avenue to go. And I think Slack is one of the vehicles we can help within that business part of that. But I think we have a broader one. If we start working on kind of a I Bisbee ULI report, yeah, right, on tourism, I think this is going to be really. And then start bringing that out, yeah. bring it to council, bring there it to go, groups, uh, and and that would be kind of a vehicle. But just remember that, that it's it's going to be messy because there's all different you know tentacles that go out and they all kind of intermingle. But just sort of identifying these kind of trends and putting some back behind it. Well, and one of the things that, that's happening, too, is the people we're attracting now are retirees. And we, yes. We've There's all, a lot of young yeah, people yes, coming But too. people yeah. with children don't come here because the schools are still right. pretty bad. Very so true. that's another issue yes. that comes up. It's like right now we're appealing to retirees yep. or young people who don't want children. Well, right. I know that I'm getting a lot of people coming in, them. locals coming in, asking for this or that or wanting some information. They're younger, too. I'm, I'm getting surprised at the number of, it's enough to where I'm taking notice. But what concerns me is the minute they look at the statistics and see that our schools are rated C, right. they yeah. don't want to move. And, well, and one I've, of the things that maybe that we do, we lobby a little bit, but obviously the schools are a detriment. When I, I look at the five to 600 people stationed at the Border Patrol office mm -hmm. here in town, and knowing most of them live in Sierra Vista. And if you really start asking why, you, you get both shopping and schools. It's s and S. I mean, boom. And maybe one of the things that we do as a committee, as we're looking at communicating out to the public, we also lobby a little bit. Uh, and, I, and I don't think there's a problem in us lobbying a little bit. Because not having a five-day school week is That's just, in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's yeah. in there yeah. bold and clear. They I mean, that, that one, that one yeah. floored them. It really did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think there's, there's a need to think about how we communicate in the community, how we communicate to the city council. Do we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with city council people? Do we, do we talk about our community, and we, do we talk about economic development as the principal industry? Do we educate that way? 
Do we educate by going in front of the city council? Um, I think we have to get sort of we have to before get you go out to perform something. We, you we get need your act we, together. We got to get our act together, like, of course. I mean, this ULI report to me was really interesting, and it really, and then we sort of went off in directions that didn't work. But I do think we can produce something like this. So does the, the I guess a, another question is, does the city support the? That's what we're going to find out. Mm -hmm. If we are primarily driven by what we believe to be tourism, or do they, again, just marginalize us? Well, it, I think that right now, because some other efforts have been put on hold, mm -hmm. that we are all busy people, too. And we can't do everything for everybody. And maybe just take this next year to try and look as tourism and see where we go with that. And if, if that's working well, let's tackle something else, Billy like Cooper bringing thing. in small artisan businesses or something like that. But I don't think as a group we can do everything. And, and I think between the slack, which is cohesiveness in the business community, and maybe another uh, kind of, what did you call it? The agenda for the coming year is trying to put together a basically tourism report on why it's important for Bisbee. Um, I think those are two big projects right there. I think if we can, a year from now, if we sit down at this table and we say we were successful in those two things, I think that would be very good. I, I think it would be, uh, it would be excellent. So I think our, our, our next thing is Again, to refresh our memories with the ULI report. That's number one. And then think about it, because we're all talented people in this, in this committee. I look at this committee, Stephanie, as probably the most talented committee in the city. I mean, we have people on here who are really thoughtful, who really are successful in their businesses, and uh, we work well together as a committee. I mean, we. We don't fight, we don't fuss, we don't do anything, we just work together. Um, and I think if we give some thought for our next meeting, using the ULI report as a platform, and then think about how do we create a message that we want to really communicate to our community, communicate to our political leadership, communicate to our business leadership, to all in all, how do we work together to do that? I think that would be a very good agenda items for our next meeting. Um, and I, in the interim, I think we need to have a special meeting. And we need to get educated on Slack. And I will warn you that I will be terrible. It's just the way it is. No, no, no. Um, and and um, move forward with that project, see what your proselytizing brings, okay. and then maybe adapt it as a problem, as a project. It will give us, the city will have a vehicle then to communicate with the business community. So that's positive in terms of our function as working as a city committee. Um, and we move forward in that, in that so. Do we have agreement that we'll do yeah. that and move forward? And, and I will tell you, he will be terrible when you get a call asking how to put an attachment on an email. Mm -hmm. that, that's <laughs> right. Well, you got to learn sometimes. Well, the first right. thing, wrong is some people still have flip phones, some yeah. of the merchants. That's true. So, <laughs> and I can tell you um, a few of them. <laughs> well, so the nice thing about Slack is that you, it works on laptops and desktops. Yeah. yeah. Thank works, God for it that. It works everywhere. <laughs> the phone is just the quickest method. Does it, does it like Facebook, it notifies you? Mm -hmm. When something's going on, you can choose the ringtone. <laughs> the, like um, that thing that she. Has. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. The best friend call. The uh, I now want to go back to uh, the second item on our agenda. Um, i we've been meeting monthly for four years, and the question that has been raised is, are we better off meeting quarterly? and having special meetings when we need them? Or do we meet monthly? Um, 
we have really gone for a quarter. This is our meeting, and our last meeting was just before the uh, November 13th, or just after. Mm -hmm. So the question on the table is, do we meet quarterly or do we meet monthly? What? And I'd be open for thoughts. Would it be possible for us to, to kind of look at this document and then regroup next month and maybe come up with some bullet points? Oh. And I think it would give us a better feel for how can we do, like... But when I, when I talk about using the ULI report as kind of a format, mm -hmm. it's not that they made a lot of suggestions. It's that they really looked at Bisbee in, in the context of Bisbee to make their suggestions. And that's what impressed me most about this report. And if we do an IBISBE ULI type report, that's what I mean by it, is looking at the context of one of the things they're discussing. It, that, I, I thought it was really smart. I was impressed because I was kind of expecting a fill in the, the blank kind of thing. And I've seen a lot of these reports where they make a report for s some community, and then you just go and change the name of the community for the next one. And this wasn't like that at all. In fact, I've seen grant applications where they forget a few of the names. It was, it was very, very professional. Um, let's talk about this. Your, your suggestion, Kathy, is that we have our, our next meeting in February, and working with the ULI report, and then decide whether we go to quarterly meetings or we go to monthly meetings. Is it, it may look and like... And Slack may get involved, too. Yeah. I mean, Rob may say we have to meet monthly for something as, as you're out proselytizing. Um, or we might end up creating some subcommittees to work on we different got, we things. Gotta, we got to be careful on the subcommittee when we get into the damn open meeting law. Well, we did it for the branding. We did it beautifully for the branding. And you, you, did, you did that without, it was an unofficial thing. Uh, you cannot commit, you, a, a group this size. Oh, no, I wasn't you, saying everybody. Yeah, you, well, I'm just saying you, you just we can't gotta do it. we got to be careful. Yeah. If you if you have, even if you, there was four of you, no, there's only there's three. Uh, three. Okay, <laughs> you're not allowed to talk to each other. But when you have a sub a sub committee, is itself governed by the open meeting law. The board of supervisors has three supervisors. They are not allowed to talk to each other about business between meetings. Because two of them the only them. time that they can talk about business is when they're at the dais. Because... How did we get around that? Well, we did check I, yeah, I don't think you... We, we did check yeah. on it, and we were told we could do it at the time. Because Peter Goldless wasn't a member of the committee, there was just you and I. He was a member of the committee. No, he, he was participating in the... Um, he was P, was P. Design or thing. P, B, and J. I don't know. No. He, he was, was on our he committee. Was he was on okay. our committee, yeah. yeah. So then we... we and we did check it out. Because we weren't remember. a quorum. No, we weren't a quorum. We weren't a quorum. You're talking, we, we, yeah, um, un unfortunately, you're talking about a quorum of the entire committee, and you're absolutely right. But the, the rulings now with the Attorney General's office is, they keep handing down new rulings. The ruling is that if a subcommittee is created for a task, that subcommittee is governed by the open media law. Even if you're just going to come back with ideas to the Allegedly, group? Allegedly, Kathy, yes. It's not my idea. So. Okay. Because okay. that was a really productive Wait. experience. Yeah, the, yeah, we, 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 we got to live, we, we'll, we'll live with it. We'll no, out I know. I just it. wonder how we, because I remember we checked it out. We did. We checked it out with John McKinnon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Things have changed. Of how, of how we were going <laughs> to do that. Um, we, have new ru we have new rulings all the time for the AG's office. I ought to, I know, I'm, so, so, I'm, uh, I'm turned in on them a lot. Same vein, if we were to get onto a Slack channel, and three of us were to have a conversation on Slack channel, that would be considered a violation. Yeah, mm -hmm. about a yeah. specific thing it would be, yes. yes. Wow. Just so like, probably don't want to just them. like, council is not supposed to be on Facebook right. discussing things, and sometimes uh, a member of council will say, well, what do you think about this? Well, that's inviting an open meeting law. So if Councilman Hanson got on your Facebook page and started communicating with you about what she wanted to do with the sidewalk. 
she could do that, but if someone else were to, okay. if, if Higgins were to okay. say, yeah, I, 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 I like that idea. It's good to know. Okay. So two people can talk about Well, it depends. With your group of six right okay. now, three of you could talk. Oh, I see. Well, that's what we did. That's well, what we just said. Yeah. Okay. No, no, okay. no. You, you can talk about the general, what, what you're doing. But you can't break into a subcommittee with a specific task. Oh, so we just so all, so all, all we do is not call a subcommittee. Right. Yeah, that's right. fine. <laughs> then it's not a subcommittee. It's six hey, people. Rob, right. you know, you want to talk? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> just see the distinction. That's, that's, yes. that's, yeah. that's all. Yeah. There's a distinction. No, no, that's a very good good one. We just we don't have subcommittees. No, subcommittees. Oh, we don't, we subcommittees won't have subcommittees. Yeah. But just just remember, three of you can talk. <laughs> but if you three talk. You can't talk to the other right. three yeah, about what you just okay. said. And this could be uh, like so on Slack? Yeah. Like, so only three can talk about something at a time? About a specific topic. About a, okay. We just have to be very careful. We, we don't... We, 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 we've lived with the open meeting law for the last four and a half years. And I don't think we've violated it. We, we've been very careful. We, we've had conversations. Um, but we, we, we don't violate it. Um, that's the nice thing about Slack is you can just look. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Oh, so exactly. No without, talk. Without talk. <laughs> yeah. 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 You can post something and I, I no one says a word. I can't have a room, I guess, is what we just got told. <laughs> right, right, right. I just but, think I but, uh, <laughs> but no, we work together. So. I think we're driving nine and nuts. <laughs> I think. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, and, and Nina has been with us for a long time now, so she knows how we operate. Um, even to using the word at ease at one point, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, we will have our February meeting then. I uh, like your idea, Kathy. We'll then talk and then see if we want to meet quarterly or we want to meet monthly. What are we, the third Wednesday? And the third, the third Wednesday in the month. Yeah, you will not be meeting here. No. Okay. You'll you'll be meeting in a jail. So oh, cool. in one of those little ten <laughs> cells in the back. There's not enough room in there. <laughs> so so cozy. You, you will be meeting in, in no doubt in Tillerville. Our council meetings will be at the senior center. Hmm. So uh, That's different. February twenty, five thirty. February twenty. Mm -hmm. Five thirty. At Toverville. And we will Which have a special building, meeting before. The detention, the okay. main building. Where is the uh, front? In the front? Nina? Or the one with the big doors? When, when does the move we'll take we'll place? The cat. I'm sorry. The dog <laughs> one. I, I didn't hear. We, we'll, we'll when see. does the move we'll, take we'll, place? We'll, we'll okay. be out of here at the end of the month. We'll be February, the beginning of February. We'll be in the detention center, I believe. Where okay, is Rob. It's on Tory Belfort. Do you know where the dog park? Okay. I think we'd like to have a meeting before we move. If we can, okay. But and you know we we'll coordinate with Nina. I coordinate with Nina. And well, sure. I will tell you right now that there is no. I don't believe I have any openings because I have to go with their calendar. And I've set we when we set the January calendar, we go through. <laughs> I will oh, check again, but I don't think that they have anything open for us. You mean using their rooms? We're using the rooms because sometimes. Sometimes so then, they can then, let then me we, use then them. we may be better off meeting in the new facility. Yeah. Um, but I can check tomorrow to see if they are. Would but I don't believe that they have an opening because we have meetings booked for the rest of the, well, the when, when January. If, if I might you also. You, you do. February 1st? February 1st. They've been kicked out. Yeah, I know. February 1st. You, you do have the ability to meet elsewhere. So you may want to talk to Morgan and say, would you like us to meet at your place? We can meet at the museum. Okay. So we and to you could. And I can do a quorum notice We can there. meet elsewhere, oh, we have, David. I'm sorry. We can meet elsewhere. Why don't we just meet yeah. at the museum? Yeah, we, we just. It's a special. It's a special meeting. And call a work session. Nice little room. Call yeah. call a work session and and uh, uh, we can meet there if Morgan has it. We need a date and a time and the location because it has to be noticed for the public. Right. Yeah. We can do that. We've done that okay. before. Mm -hmm. Rob, we can meet at the museum. Yeah. Sounds great. Kathy? That's plenty. Plenty of room. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then, and then I don't have to we can all bring our cell phones. <laughs> we, can, we can all bring our cell phones. Great. And it's going to be a learning session and a discussion, and then we'll learn how we administer the program. Okay. Just let me know 
What time or when? What date? Yeah, I mean, coordinate with. Yeah, we, we do have to. We, we've got. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll make sure that I can do my best to be there. But we, we also have staff. You know, that's one of the reasons for the uh, talking about quarterly right. is because our, our staff is, is we we're, we're only have so much. We have 22 committees, so we're, they're getting killed because that's, I mean, she lives in Sierra Vista. So when you guys are done, she drives back home. Well, move here. <laughs> <laughs> I actually live in Hereford, but it's between, well, okay. I, it's between my husband's work and my work, so I yes. can't move. <laughs> now that you have that you have to understand that Nina is part of our committee. I mean, <laughs> I mean we, 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 well, we treat Nina as part to, of us. We're uh, adjourn 15 minutes earlier because it's an extra 15 minutes to get down to this point. What? It's okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Very, very good. I, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. Oh, let, let me move on. Does anybody have any? Mr. Mr. Chair, may I interrupt? I'm sure. I'm sorry, but you do have an action item here that you're not acting on. May I suggest that we'll you have table? Well, then I suggest you move. have a motion to table. Move to table item three. Until oh. the next Is there a second, second. The motion to table? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The item is tabled to our February meeting. Where did it say action? Item three. David put this discussion on. Discussion of possible action. Possible action. Oh, okay. There it is. Got, okay. It. Got it. Okay. Is there anything going on in the community that we should know about as a committee? Chocolate cake soon is next month Ooh. on the 9th, I think. No, it's the 16th. That's right. Huh? 16th, Kathy. What is 16th. it? Is it the 16th? I, I look ahead. Oh, chocolate. The second Saturday is when it is. Okay. And the only other thing is we got. I thought it was on the night too. Anna May got invited to come to it. I, don't I know. was. I was just told it was the sixteenth, and I just looked it up. If it, if it um, is it the sixteenth, they always have it on the second Saturday. I think it's the ninth, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. I hope so. But I was just told. I literally, I have an email since um, we've been sitting here saying that it's. A, they. Ju I just put the table tents out. I'm pretty sure it says the ninth, because I was surprised. I think, yeah, I, and we were invited. I think it is the ninth. It's always on Valentine's Day. Right? Yeah. It's always been on Valentine's Day, so I assumed it would be, but I was correct. It does say the ninth. Okay. You are correct. Okay. The email I have from the week before Valentine's Day, Valentine's Joni. chocolate yes. tasting. Right. Where's it at? Library. And our round table oh, no. Central no. School. Central School. Central School. Central School. Our round table of current events and any or current subject. Anything going on that we should know about? The, is is it? the Grassy Park lighting <laughs> uh, lighting project. How is that coming? Uh, we had our walkthrough on Monday, and we have two local contractors that Good. hopefully will bid on the project. So one from Sierra Vista, where he looked at it, is we're too small. Hmm. So <laughs> what pro what project is that? This is the third phase of the. Oh, Grassy Park revitalization. This is the museum thing. The whole the lighting. Well, well, it's owned by the city of Bisbee, but we're taking lead on it. Yeah, we're bring, bringing lighting into the park. Is this the security energy and, thing that's two point no. five million dollars? No, no, no. This is okay. not. This no, is just. No, 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 it's yeah. bringing it's bringing lighting into the park to to kind of encourage people that they can use park at night and they don't have to go and sleep there and and things like that. It's just a safety security issue. Mm -hmm. No, it's a good and idea. And lighting the park, but Al Hopper came up with this. Lighting the museum facade and the black lighting from that is mm -hmm. going to be really stunning. It'll be neat. It'll be neat. And, and, then and then money came from next, next came week, from the county. Next week, we'll, we'll be they'll be opening the bids, so we the, have to move on it fast. How's the real estate market doing? Uh, still very low on inventory, but what we have is moving. So that's good. That's good. So right now it is a buyer's well seller's market, quite honestly. <laughs> So you market. sell, you're selling, you're listing something that's going to go fast, because pickings are slim. But there's a lot of commercial properties just sitting there. Commercial is a whole different ball game. That's sitting. But that's my interest. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I know you. <laughs> you're keeping an eye on it. Oh, right? I am. It's Good. great. I love getting yeah. those. So the Belize building sold again. It's in under contract, I believe. Sloan bought it. Somebody. Yeah, and well, she's well, accepting backup it. offers. I thought that was rather amusing. Uh, <laughs> Belize. Oh, okay. Belize. Nancy must have some doubts about his ability she to might. qualify. Yeah. No, no. You know what? You always accept backups because you just well, Sloan. He's not going to fall through. <laughs> Who are we kidding? I, I laughed when I saw the sign in the window. <laughs> the um, 
How's the retail market doing? It's this, I, you know, we did really well. In fact, Fred had asked for some numbers and I looked and last year we did 15% better during tourist season than we did the year before and 10% better during non-tourist season. But January started out really slow and I think part of it might be the shutdown. Mm -hmm. I think people are kind of, are you seeing that? Yep. I think they're just being a little more cautious. Mm -hmm. um, we're not horribly behind, but I'm definitely not seeing the volume of people. How about weather? Weather yeah, didn't help either. Yeah, the, sure. It's been a real, real cold. Gray cold. Dur yeah. I've yeah. been keeping track of the Queen Mine Tour and the museum numbers for 20 plus years. January is always a slump. But I have all this activity. January, yeah. You know. I know that just for last year, the museum numbers are up. And every year they've gone up a little bit, not huge, but it's better than going down. No, we, we, we felt it across all three years last year and the year before. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so you just see that little bit of a tick, yeah. you know, and you're like, hmm, that's strange. Yeah, last then, year felt like it was. Yeah. 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 But when we look at our weather app and we look at uh, finances, now the stock market was a lot lower last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. But when we look at weather, it was a lot warmer last year. Yeah, yep. mm -hmm. um, yeah the weather did it. And that brings now, people out on the weekend. Yeah. So. I'm in denial. I forgot about but, it. But January 15th <laughs> is when we, uh, January 15th is when our group sits around and drinks scotch and smokes cigars. That's the beginning. <laughs> that is the beginning. So that, wait, did we miss it? Or you that missed was it. yesterday? You oh. missed it. Oh. Yeah, wait, how, how did you not It's obviously not this group. Well, I, 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 I have to tell you, if, if we get off this new program, Rob's taking the lead on and it's success, we will sit around and drink scotch and <laughs> smoke cigars. Smoke cigars. <laughs> smoke cigars. Okay, so it's 7 o'clock and we... It is time to adjourn. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Second. Is there a second? We are adjourned. <laughs> and I just, as you're adjourned,